Hey guys, it's Megan. So Taylor Swift's Eras Tour has officially started. Um, if you're going, I'm very jealous. Sadly, that is one dream that I think I'm just gonna have to give up on. But I am super excited for those of you who get to go. I saw this trend on TikTok where people were making friendship bracelets inspired by the song You're On Your Own Kid. And I thought this looked like so much fun. So in today's video, I'll be showing you how to make 10 bracelets inspired by every single Taylor Swift album. I mean, like, obviously I didn't do one for every single Target exclusive or like platinum edition or whatever, but you get what I mean. If you want to get any of the beads that I used in this video, I'm going to put a link below. I tried to find as many of the beads as I possibly could. I got most of these from Amazon, but some of them were beads that I just kind of already had. Oh, also, if you need more DIY jewelry ideas, I'm gonna link a whole playlist down below. I made some friendship bracelets a couple years ago that I think would work really well for this trend. So the first bracelet that I made was inspired by Taylor Swift's debut album. For the main part of the bracelet, I used some 0.5 millimeter stretch magic cord, some three millimeter seed beads, and a couple random seed beads that I'm pretty sure were from like a craft kit that I had as a kid or something. I feel like we all probably know how to make a bracelet. I just cut a piece of string that was about twice as long as my wrist, and I I actually like to clip a little mini binder clip to my string to hold it. Or you could use a clipboard. That actually works better. I switched to one of those later. I just strung on my beads super randomly. There was literally no rhyme or reason to this. The only requirement was that the beads had to be blue or green so that it would match the album cover. And once it was long enough, I removed the binder clip and tied about six knots in my string. If you've ever used this type of string, you probably know that these knots do not always stay put. So after I cut off the extra string, I like to add some UV resin to my knot to secure it. If you don't have resin, if you have a gel nail kit, you could probably use the top coat from that instead. I definitely went a little overboard with the resin, but we're just gonna ignore that. Um, it's fine. I did get better as I went, don't worry. I got these butterfly charms from Amazon a while back, and I thought these would be perfect to represent the little butterflies that are in the background on the album cover. I attached the charm with a jump ring, and here's how the first bracelet turned out. This is probably one of my favorite Taylor Swift albums. Definitely top three. My mom, she was always super into country music, and I was definitely not, um, but this was one of the few CDs that we would actually agree on. For the fearless bracelet, I wanted to go for sort of a yellow and gold color scheme. I ended up using some gold star beads and some gold balls from this set, a few of these like yellowish seed beads, and some four millimeter pearl beads. I've really been loving this sort of random mismatch style of jewelry where the beads aren't always in an exact pattern. So that's basically what I did here. Like I said before, they're not all super obvious, but the vibes are there. You could totally use letter beads and spell out fearless or something. I just didn't really want to, so I did not. I tied it and sealed the knot the same way I did before, and here Here's how the finished bracelet turned out. I honestly don't have a whole lot to say about this album. I mean, it's a classic. Taylor's version is even better. We love it. So the next one is gonna be inspired by Speak Now. And for this bracelet, I wanted to do something with these charms that I had. These are from the Taylor Swift Wonderstruck perfume. I remember I got this in like 2012 and I was so sad because I dropped it on the floor and all the charms fell off. But you know me, we save literally everything around here. And I only found two of the charms. Like I don't know what happened to the other ones, but like the fact that I even had these is impressive to me. I grabbed some purple beads to match her dress on the album cover, some gold 20 gauge wire and my one step looper tool and I got to work. I took my wire and made a loop at the end. I absolutely love this one-step looper tool, but you can definitely do this with some round nose pliers and wire cutters as well. I slid on my bead, made another loop at the end, and repeated this a couple more times. Which, side note, if you have one of these bead boards, the flat side is actually really good for laying out bracelets. But after I did that to all my beads, I used my round nose pliers to open up the loops a little bit, and I added on the feather charm. I repeated this process of opening up the loops just a little bit, and then closing them with my round nose pliers for all the rest of the beads to connect them together. Make sure that every single wire loop is closed because we do not want this falling apart. Once it was long enough, I used jump rings to attach a lobster clasp to one end of the bracelet and some chain to the other end to create the closure. And here's how my finished bracelet turned out. I am so obsessed with this. Like, I'm so glad I finally found a way to use these charms. Like, see, I knew I kept them for a reason. I want to use the other charm to make a matching necklace, but I did not really have time for that because, you know, I still have seven more bracelets to get through. Next, we have Red, which is my all-time favorite Taylor Swift album, especially Taylor version. So for this one, I wanted to do something with hearts because of the heart sunglasses that she would always wear during this era. So for the main part of the bracelet, I made a loop at the end of a piece of 22 gauge wire and threaded the wire through one hole on one of these silver heart beads. Then I added a red bead to go in the middle and threaded the rest of the wire through. I made another loop at the bottom of the heart and here's what it looked like when I was done. To turn this into a bracelet, I threaded a 12 inch piece of wax cotton cord through each loop on the charm, tying a knot to secure it. I twisted each side of the cord individually, then twisted them together like this. I tied a knot at the end, 
repeated this on the other side, then used a lighter to melt the knots. To finish the bracelet, I taped it to my table like this, tied another piece of cord around both ends like so, and made about four square knots to make the closure. If you need help with this, I explained how to do it in my DIY Pura Vita bracelets video. I cut off the excess, carefully melted the ends with a lighter, and here's how the finished bracelet turned out. Like I said, all-time favorite Taylor Swift album. This came out on my 15th birthday, I remember. I made my mom take me to Target, because you know, you gotta go to Target to get the deluxe version. Comment down below, which Taylor Swift album is your favorite? Next is 1989. I kind of struggled to think of a design for this bracelet. I don't really know why. I feel like the most obvious thing would have been to play off of her seagull shirt that's on the album cover, but like, where the heck are you supposed to find seagull beads? I did look, but like, anyway. So I ended up going with butterflies instead. I felt like they were close enough. Plus, in song number 13, which is the song Clean, she says something about butterflies, so, um, you know what? It still works. On the cover, her shirt looks purple, but in real life, it's actually blue. So, I used some purple and blue faceted gem beads and also some silver beads because I just felt like they kind of fit the vibe. And after I tied the bracelet and sealed the knot, here's how it turned out. Super simple, but I really like it. Next is Reputation. I did this one a little bit differently. Instead of the stretchy string, I made the base with some 26 gauge wire. If you've ever seen my seed bead choker video, I basically used the same technique. I just cut about 10 inches of wire, made a loop at the end, and twisted the extra wire around the base of the loop about four times to make sure it was secure. I cut off any excess, flattened it, then strung on my beads. I wanted to do something that was sort of a nod to the whole snake motif that Taylor Swift had going on during this era, so I cut a piece of chain from a broken necklace and strung it on the wire like this. I added a few more beads, then brought the wire through the other end of the chain so it kind of hangs off the bracelet. When I reached the end, I made another loop in the wire just like before, again wrapping it around the base of the loop a couple times to secure it. I used jump rings to attach some magnetic clasps to the loops to make the closure. And here's how my bracelet turned out! Honestly, this might be like my least favorite Taylor Swift album. It's fine, like I still like it, don't come for me. Personally, I kind of associate these albums with whatever I was personally going through whenever they were released, and when this came out, besties, I was going through it. If you made it this far, like, you're obviously a Taylor Swift fan, but do you have a least favorite album? Next is Lover. I kept this bracelet super simple. I really did not have a plan for this. I just knew that I wanted to use these white heart beads. I combined the heart beads with some pink and clear iridescent glass beads that my aunt gave me, and here's how it turned out. I originally wanted to add more purple or blue to go with the album cover, but I didn't want it to be so similar to the 1989 bracelet. I think the iridescent beads were sort of a nice compromise though. So, album number eight, Folklore. Honestly, one of the few positives to come out of 2020, let's be real. For this bracelet, I decided to do a design inspired by the infamous Folklore cardigan. I'm kind of sad that I missed out on these, but whenever they came out, I wasn't really sure what size to get, and like at the time, I kind of thought $50 was a little excessive, but you know, jokes on me, I guess, because people are literally trying to resell these for like $250 to $500. So I don't need it that much. This was another simple one. I did a repeating pattern of three off-white beads, one black bead, three more off-white beads, and a silver star bead. I repeated this until the bracelet was long enough, tied it and sealed the knot just like we've been doing, and here's how it turned out. I love this so freaking much. Like, if you have a Taylor Swift cardigan, you need to make one of these to match. Like, send me pictures. My Instagram is at WellerMegs. Um, honestly, Instagram- I never post on Instagram. It's fine. Next is Evermore, which was also released in 2020. Not gonna lie, I sorta got lazy with this one. I mean, I like this album, don't get me wrong, but there really isn't anything about the whole aesthetic of it that really stood out to me. This one in Folklore, like, they're good, but, you know, I don't really have that personal connection to this one like I had with some of the older albums. Actually, no, I take that back because the song Tis the Damn Season very relevant to the past couple years. I actually made an ornament inspired by that song for a video that I did a couple months ago, but for this bracelet, I just did another one of those random things with like no pattern. I just tried to pick beads that matched her flannel and the gray from the album cover. I tied it, sealed the knot, and here's how the bracelet turned out. I wouldn't typically go for this color scheme, but you know what? She's cute. I like it. Definitely giving fall. I actually have a flannel that would go with this perfectly, so 10 out of 10. I love it. And finally, we get to Taylor Swift's most recent album, which is Midnight. This is probably my favorite Taylor Swift album in a while. Like, I really like this one. I've always been a big fan of the whole, like, galaxy star motif, so I had no trouble finding beads for this one. I took a lot of inspiration from this outfit, and I snuck a few purple beads in there too, because A, it's my favorite color, and B, the first track on the album is literally called Lavender Haze, so like, 
it works. Did any of you see those TikToks of people like stealing the rugs from Target? I, I want one of those rugs so bad. Let me know, what's your favorite song from Midnight's? I think mine is the song Dear Reader because you know what? The older I get, the more I realize that literally no one actually knows what they're doing and same but anyways that was everything for this video L make sure to let me know which bracelet was your favorite also let me know your favorite taylor swift album are you going to the eras tour if you are i'm very jealous um i can't wait to see everybody's pictures and videos and whatnot though if you like this video make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more videos just like this one my merch my website and all my social media will be linked down below i love you guys so so much and i will see you guys later bye